I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Yandere Simulator. There is now a new street that we can go into. Once we're in Yanchan's room at night, we can leave and we can go on this new street. I want to check it out right now, but before we do that, we're going to read what's new in this update. So here it goes. It is now possible to exit Yanchan's room at nighttime and visit a street. Nice. The current street is an experiment slash prototype just to test out the concept. There is very little functionality in the current version of the street. I'd appreciate hearing your thoughts and feedback on how it could benefit the player. It is possible to interact with each store, but it is not possible to buy anything yet. The items listed for sale are placeholders. You're welcome to share your thoughts on what the stores could sell and how they could benefit gameplay. I only have one shopkeeper portrait right now, but in the future, each store will have a unique shopkeeper. And besides Yanshan and the shopkeepers, there are 15 characters in the street scene. Two of them are well hidden. Can you spot them all? Well, I don't care if they're well hidden. I'm gonna find them no matter what. If you guys cool with that and you're down with that, everybody get ready and buckle up, cause here we go. All right, boys and girls, girls and boys, it is now nighttime. We are in our PJs. We are about to go to town and we're gonna see what this new street looks like because we know what the old town looks like and here we are. Why does it look kind of fuzzy? Uh, what? Okay. No, it looked kind of blurry, but is it me? Do I need to get my eyes checked? Why the fuck is it so blurry? For sale? What's for sale? The ability to see this street? Hold on. I can see people. It kind of goes in focus when I zoom in. Let me see if I could change any settings here. No, I actually can't. So we're in town, as it says in the corner right there, and there's 15 characters, okay? So, is that the evil bully girl? You know, the one that clasps her hands together because she's so goddamn evil! But here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. Is that Oka? <gasps> Oka! Oh, Oka, I missed you! Is that Kakona and the headmaster? Bruh. Is that the girl that she meets in Shisuda Town or whatever? Hold on, who's this? No wrong. You're not welcome here. Why? I can't even see where I'm going. So damn blurry. Wait, what are those guys doing down there? Are they smoking crack? Hey, crack is whack. Okay, so when I press spacebar, I can actually shift from nighttime to daytime. Whoa. It's actually a little bit better when I look at it through daytime. So we're just gonna do that. And then I'm gonna pay to use the binoculars, even though I cannot see diddly dick. Hold on, let me go inside this hair salon. Oh, hairstyle. Oh, good customer. Welcome, how may I help you? $59.99 for a haircut? Well, you better become my pubes too. That's expensive. I was expecting at least like 15 bucks at the most. No wonder everybody's hair so fucked up in this game. They all don't want to get their hair cut from that lady. Okay, let's count the characters real quick. I won't edit anything. Blue-haired girl. Green-haired girl. That's two. Uh, Yellow-haired girl. Three. Red hair. Four. Five. Six. This tall-ass girl. Uh, Kakona and the headmaster. So, what is that? I can't even count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's Oka looking all nice and snazzy. Hold on. 10, 11, 12 are down here. Wait a minute. Where are the last two? Oh, there's 13. Okay, you know what? I think there's two characters somewhere out here, but I can't see anything. Oh, crap. What the hell am I zooming into? Okay, hold on. Let's see. Let's see if I can find some characters. Holy scrody balls. I cannot see. Well, actually, I can see. I can see. I'm just being a little bitch. I can see. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Is that boat driving onto another boat? I think that boat is floating on water. That's a Jesus boat. Holy crap. I want to be on that boat. That looks like a fun time. Okay, but can I find somebody who's well hidden? Convenience store, cigarettes, alcohol, condoms. Who's using condoms? My senpai? Nah, anybody but San Daddy's using those. Rat poison and sleeping medicine. Okay, we'll mess with that later. I mean, I know it's a prototype. Game store. Yanvania, senpai of the night. Magical girl, pretty Miyuki. Granddad, dude, five. Let's go. <laughs> hey, I'm playing that. I'm playing that all night. The Elder Scrub 5 and Minecraft. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. Electronic store. Oh, we already know about that. Hold on. Video camera and tripod. I guess that's from Asume, huh? Like when we kidnap her and put her in the basement. Remote controlled radio. That's pretty good, I guess, if we want to distract somebody. Mini quadcopter drone. If we want to spy on somebody, maybe. Headset and earpiece for like the matchmaking stuff. And directional mic also for the matchmaking stuff. Yeah, maybe. Maybe so. Maybe not. Maybe so. Okay, I got to find those other two characters, guys. They're well hidden. They're well hidden, but I'm going to find them. Go home. You go home. I'm not going home yet. 
Hardware store, we know it's over here. An abundance of weapons. They're fat weapons. Manga store, okay. I don't even know how to read. Maid cafe. Damn it! I have to go back here again. Oh, look! Look! Who the fuck Somebody's is here! Guy? He's looking at me! Who the fuck is that? Hold on. Who? Who? Hanto Koki. Who? Hanto Koki! Guys, it's Hanto Koki. I found him. Number 14. He's on the boat looking back at me. Hold on. Guys, I know my binocular looking at skills are whack. They're ass. They're butt ass. But look, I found one of the dudes. Hold on, he puts down his binoculars. Let me see if I can get a good look at this asshole. Oh, Hanto Koki, I see your bitch ass. I think he's a four-eyed freak too. All right, the only name that I could find that kind of looks like the figure that's standing right there is Kencho Psycho. Look at this right here. Doesn't that look like he's wearing the same outfit as right here in the picture? So from reading this long description of his life, basically he feels like he's a rival to his sister because his sister was supposed to be like the heir to the Psycho Corporation and he doesn't like that. So he tries to be better than Megami, but Megami is like better than him in every single way. So maybe he's trying to spy on her because he's not allowed to interfere with her life and that's why he's on a boat i have no freaking clue guys oh there's the 15th person i can see them right there they're behind the bar or the counter or whatever who is that they're wearing a green shirt they look like they have a headband on and they have black hair let me see if I can see that in the Yandere Simulator characters list. All right, I'm looking through the characters list again, guys. We got to look for somebody with a green shirt and a white headband. I don't see that in the characters list. Hold on. The only one who kind of resembles that is Ayano's mom, Ryoba. But it can't be Yanchan's mom because it says status on vacation. So that means she's not even in the same town unless her working in that little, what, bakery shop is her vacation, but I doubt it. Yeah, guys, obviously I'm having a hard time making out who that could be. But let me know who you also think that is in the comment section down below. But this is the street, guys. This is the street. It has all these stores that offer a lot of different things. So, you know, you could just get all the stuff you need over here. And I do recommend that you guys get Grand That Dude 5 because, you know, it could be game of the year. You never know. But yeah, there's a lot of useful items here. And I know he asked for feedback. I think the only thing that I could say off the top of my head is like when your rivals are here at any certain point in the week, they could come to this ramen shop right here and then you could be over here and then you could be eavesdropping on their combos about where they're going to be that particular week. Like I've been playing a lot of Catherine and then you're hanging at the bar. You're playing as Vincent. You're hanging at the bar with your friends and you're having conversations and then you can walk around the bar and have conversations with other people and you can listen in on conversations. Maybe for Yanchan, she could sit like right here in the corner and then if Oak is the rival, let's just say Oak is the rival for that week, she could be eating with the other occult club people and then you could eavesdrop and you'll know exactly where she is at a certain point of the day. Like for example, Oka will just be sitting eating ramen talking to her friend saying, oh, on Wednesday I have to go to the art room to do like a special project or some bullshit like that. Like just eavesdropping on different rivals like if they're in this store, if they're in this store, if they happen to be talking to this Yakuza guy in the alleyway. I think eavesdropping could be crucial here if you're trying to find like a stealthy way to eliminate your rivals. But that's pretty much the only like suggestion that I have. I don't really know what you should do for like hair salon or other things like that because I'm not good with like the little things like music store. I don't know what kind of music you put in there. Like you could put a whole track of Yanchan's ass clapping and I wouldn't even say anything. I'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I know that this whole street is blurry, but that ass? That's the clearest ass I've ever seen in this game. Nurse who? Who is this? But I'm just messing around, guys. We're gonna go home because we have one headmaster tape to listen to. If somebody actually remembers what tape we're on, I applaud you because I do not know any of this stuff. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, steel case key. What the heck? Okay, grab that. Grab that shit. And is he boozing? Is he losing? He is. He drinking that sake. That's Saki Miyu. Okay, so I didn't want to get this wrong because it's been so damn long since we've gotten a new Headmaster tape. The new Headmaster tape is six, so here we go. I saw her. That, that woman, I saw her again. The one who's responsible for everything. I, I, perhaps I'll start at the beginning. Every week, I travel to Psycho Corporate Headquarters to have a meeting with Mr. Psycho about Academy. This time, I arrived a few minutes earlier than expected. I asked the secretary if it would be all right to begin the meeting early, but she refused. 
She told me that Mr. Psycho had another appointment right before mine, and that I'd have to wait my turn before I could see him. I took a seat and began to wait. That's when she walked into the room. It's been ten years, but not a single day has gone by that I haven't thought about her. The one who ruined everything for me. Ryoba? I recognized her immediately. She had aged, but I could still tell it was her. Damn, he basically called her she old as hell. She glanced in my direction for a moment, and our eyes met. She smirked, but said nothing to me. She walked straight through the waiting room and directly into Mr. Psycho's office, without even speaking a single word to the secretary. At first, I was speechless. Then I jumped out of my seat and asked the secretary to identify that woman. The secretary was silent for a few moments and then gave me some generic platitude about how the details of Mr. Psycho's appointments must be kept strictly confidential. That didn't stop me from asking everything that came to mind. How long had that woman been coming here? How often? What business did she have here? But the secretary was like a stone wall that refused to budge. I couldn't just leave it at that. I left the waiting room and asked the nearest employees if they could help me. When they saw how distraught I was, they were eager to help. But when I asked them if they had seen that woman who just walked by, they... Their attitudes changed in a heartbeat. They slowly turned away from me and returned to their work in silence. They ignored me, as if I wasn't even there. I haven't been treated like that since I was a schoolboy. I returned to the waiting room and paced back and forth anxiously, waiting for that woman to exit Mr. Psycho's office. I'd spent years fantasizing about an encounter like this one. I, I had rehearsed every single word I would say to her if I had an opportunity to speak with her again. I was fully prepared to tell her exactly how I felt about her actions ten years ago. Then I heard the secretary's voice. Mr. Psycho will see you now. I was baffled. That woman was still in the office, wasn't she? Why would the secretary send me in there? I was confused, but eager to see that woman again. I approached the door to Mr. Psycho's office. I remember that my hand was actually trembling as I gripped the handle. I took a deep breath and opened the door to his office, expecting to see her standing there, but... But she wasn't. The only people in that room were Mr. Psycho and his son. I entered the office and looked around in confusion, wondering where that woman could have been hiding, but, but she was nowhere to be seen. Mr. Psycho asked me what was troubling me, and I, I told him exactly what was on my mind. That woman, the one who walked into your office a few minutes ago, where is she? When did she leave? But Mr. Psycho didn't reply. He only smirked, as if he was uh, amused by the situation asked me to take a seat. He tried to talk about Academy, like usual, but I wasn't having any of it. I didn't want to let go of the subject, and I, I kept asking about that woman. Mr. Psycho's amusement quickly turned to irritation, and he firmly asked me to keep our conversation to the matter of Academy. Mr. Psycho can be quite imposing, even while remaining civil, and from that moment onward, I was too scared to pursue the matter further. I dropped it, and we proceeded to have a standard meeting. As ever, Mr. Psycho's son stood behind his father in silence. That's the guy that we saw on the Mr. boat. Psycho I know it is. told me the exact reason why he keeps his son at his side during business meetings. It's uh, most likely that it's a form of training, exposing him to the type of interactions he'll be having on a daily basis once he inherits his father's empire. As the years passed, I have watched Mr. Psycho's son grow from a young boy into a young man. But I can count on one hand the number of times I've heard him speak. The meeting adjourned. I made one last attempt to bring up the subject of that woman, but Mr. Psycho interrupted me and bid me farewell. I knew that I wouldn't be able to get anything out of him, so I simply left. I questioned the secretary again, but nothing. 
I got nothing. I attempted to talk to the nearest employees, but they politely excused themselves. It was as if that woman was a taboo subject that no one was allowed to speak of, or that she was a mere hallucination. Something I... something I dreamt up. No. No, I didn't just imagine her. I saw her. I saw her. I didn't catch her out of the corner of my eye. I didn't glimpse her for only a moment. We looked directly at each other, but... But what business would that woman have with Mr. Psycho? What could he possibly want from her? Why didn't the secretary acknowledge her when she walked in? And, and how, how did she leave his office? There was only one way to leave that room, and I was standing right in front of it. It, it doesn't make any sense. It, it... <sighs> I won't give up here. I'm going to dig for answers until I'm forced to stop. I don't know how much I'll be able to learn, but... But it can't end here. It... it can't. Okay. Alright, that was a lot to take in. That was almost seven minutes long. Well, we got a little bit more backstory. Somebody went into his office, somebody that caused trouble over ten years ago. He doesn't know how they got in or out. Actually, he does know how they got in, but he doesn't know how they got out. I think just the fact that the tape said that Mr. Psycho's son was in there confirms to me that he was the guy on the boat that we saw when we were looking through the binoculars in the town. So that was definitely Sancho Psycho. I have no doubt in my mind. I feel like that was Yanchan's mom in the street inside of that like bakery thing or whatever that was. But with that one, I'm not 100% sure. You guys let me know down below in the comments below what you think about that. But yeah, guys, that was the street. That was the new Headmaster tape. Hopefully the next update either has Osana or her little sidekick implemented into the game. If you guys are looking forward to that, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!